Good afternoon. My name is Alma Gutierrez, Communication Analyst at Health Workforce Development. We are excited that you've joined us today for the Golden State Social Opportunities Scholarship Program webinar. So here's the agenda uh, for today's webinar. I will be doing the housekeeping and introduction, followed by a welcome and overview by Dr. Sharmil Shaw. And then Officer, Program Officer Diana Garcia will go over the program elements, application process, and evaluation. Uh, we will have a question and answer um, session, which will be done at the end of the presentation, followed by closing remarks by Dr. Sharmil Shah. Uh, before we begin, we will do some housekeeping and introduction. This webinar is hosted in Microsoft Teams. If you're not familiar with the platform, you can find the camera and microphone chat and video controls at the menu bar at the top of your screens. Number two, the chat option will be open for asking questions during the question and answer session, which is at the end of the webinar. And number three, this webinar will be recorded and will be available within seven to 10 business days. Due to an issue with Microsoft uh, Teams platform, uh, we ask that you please do not use the Q&A feature if you do see that available and use the chat option instead. Thank you for your understanding and cooperation. And with that, I will Pass it on to Dr. Shil Marshall. Thank you. Thank you, Alma. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you had a good lunch and um, so excited that you're here with us today. So thank you for joining us today for the Golden State Social Opportunities Program webinar. And it is my pleasure to welcome all of you. The Golden State Social Opportunities Program, or GSOP, aims to increase the number of trained licensed behavioral health professionals providing direct care in California-based nonprofit organizations. And we know, especially those of you on this call, that behavioral health treatment can significantly improve the quality of life and help individuals develop healthier coping patterns so that stressors can be managed in more adaptable ways. You as potential applicants of this program will play a critical role in providing clinical behavioral health services to those living in underserved communities. But before we jump into the content of this webinar, I wanted to ground us a bit in the mission of our department. HCI expands equitable access to quality, affordable health care for all Californians through resilient facilities actionable information, and the health workforce each community needs. The health workforce, next slide please. The health workforce development office develops, supports, and expands a health workforce that serves medically underserved areas, serves Medi-Cal members, and represents the California it serves through racial and language diversity. The office also offers programs that provide financial support for organizations to build the workforce pipeline, organizations to expand educational capacity, and individuals like you pursuing health careers, and organizations supporting providers and addressing retention. Next slide, please. I'd like to really um, bring to your attention kind of the problem that we're trying to solve with this program. Um, one in six adults suffers from mental illness and one in 14 children have a serious emotional disturbance. Despite a growing need for skilled behavioral health professionals, there is an inadequate supply of clinicians to keep up with the demand. California will need to expand its behavioral health workforce to better address the unmet needs of its diverse communities. And this program is one way we do that. And the purpose of this is to increase the supply of licensed behavioral health professionals providing direct care in California-based nonprofit organizations. We have about 3.5 million to fund individual scholarships of up to 25,000 per year with a total of no more than 50,000. This program is funded as part of the state's 2023 Budget Act. And now I'd like to turn it over to our program officer, Diana Garcia, who will take us through the program elements and key dates. Take it away, Diana. Thank you, Dr. Shaw. For the Golden State Social Opportunities Program Scholarship, the eligible professions 
include licensed clinical social worker, licensed marriage and family therapist, licensed professional clinical counselor, and licensed clinical psychologist, PhD, or PsyD. The award levels. HCI may award full, partial, or no funding to an applicant based on the applicant's criteria score and the amount of available funds. Applicants will be awarded no more than their total cost of attendance for up to two years of the program. Awardees are required to provide a copy of licensure, registration, or certificate issued by the appropriate licensing board before the grant agreement expiration date. Within six months of graduation, awardees must begin serving two years of service obligation at a California-based community nonprofit organization. The key, take, key dates to take note of, application became available on April 9th of 2024. The informational webinar today, April 16th at two o'clock p.m. The application submission deadline is May 24th, 2024 at three o'clock p.m. The anticipated award notice dates will be in July of 2024, and the scholarship grant agreement start date is in August of 2024. The application process for the Golden State Social Opportunities Program. There are nine sections to the application, First, it's the general information, then profile information, contact information with one contact required, and that would be a contact outside of the household of the applicant. And next would be educational information, professional information, scholarship program verification, employment history, and required documents. Please ensure that you use an acceptable full file format on your application or it will be rejected. Examples of, accept, of acceptable formats are .jpg, .doc, .docx, and .pdf. And the final section of the application is the application certification. Next slide, please. The award amounts up to $25,000 a year with a total of no more than $50,000. As funding permits, grantees may apply each year for another GSOP award once their existing contract term is complete. For each award, the grantee will be required to serve an additional two-year service obligation. To remain eligible, the individual must still be enrolled in an accredited graduate program and meet all other GSOP eligibility requirements. Post-award and payment provisions. HCI expects the grantee will begin performance of the grant agreement on the start date listed on the grant award documents. The state controller's office mails paper check directly to the grantee's address on file. Please ensure that HCI has your most current address on file to avoid delay in payment. HCI cannot provide tax advice to grantees. We are not tax professionals and tax consequences may vary depending on the grantee. For this reason, grantees should seek professional tax advice. HCI reserves the right to recover monies for grantees' failure to perform service and other grant agreement obligations. The evaluation and scoring procedures for GSOC. The application evaluation criteria includes the following themes. Income-based financial situation, experience in an underserved area or with underserved groups, employment by a California-based nonprofit organization, experience with homelessness, experience with the foster or child welfare system, first-generation college students, languages spoken, prior awarding through GSOC, and an academic setting in the California State University or University of California. Next slide, please. The grant application resources can be found on our website. Review the GSOP grant guide before starting the online application. And review the GSOP technical assistance guide 
before starting the online application. The online application listed as 2024-2025 GSOP online application. And for more information, please visit our behavioral health programs by emailing us at a bhprograms at hcai.ca.gov. And you can check out our HKI's funding eligibility tool also on our website. With that, um, we'll take questions and provide answers, and I turn it over to Alma. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Uh, that was a great presentation. And now we begin the question and answer session. I believe the chat should be enabled by now. And we do have some questions. Um, I ask that all questions are submitted via the chat. So if you are raising your hand, uh, please put your question in the chat box. We have a question from uh, Julia. Eligible positions at LCSW, but what if working towards towards it as an ASW? That would qualify. Um, we would need your um, registration that you are applying for, or have applied for your ACSW. OK. Uh, question from Douglas. Are MFT students and AMFTs eligible for this award? Sorry, if you could repeat the question, Alma. Uh, sure. Are MFT students and AMFTs eligible for this award? I believe um, I can get some. Yes, you're Thank eligible. You. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. Um, yes, a uh, question from Bianca. If we are graduating from a program in May 2024, do we still qualify? You would not qualify in May 2024 if you are not enrolled in a degree program as of September 30th of 2024. So May would be two um, before that deadline, before that time that occurs. Thank you. And a question from Emilio um, asking if the presentation will be uh, sent out. The presentation and the recording of this webinar will be available within seven to 10 business days. We will be posting it on our website and we will also email it to all the um, people that have registered for the webinar, whether they attended or not. And a um, question from Audrina, does Volunteer of America count as volunteer work? It would count um, if it is volunteer work on um, experience for the application. Um, so yes, it would count if it is for um, you have volunteer experience in the application. Thank you. And Trina Rodriguez, are we able to receive the scholarship in addition to participating in the CalSWEC program? You are not. That would be conflicting um, funding, and you must select one or the other, but not both at the same time. OK. Uh, from Kelly, do we need to serve two years even if you're if you only received one year of funding? Correct. It's a guaranteed two year service obligation, regardless if it's one year funding or two year funding. Question from Douglas, do applicants who submit their application earlier have an advantage in consideration and ev evaluation than those who submit their applications later? No, the deadline um, is May 24th for the submission of all applications and um, will be the application will be reviewed in full at that time. Question from Grace, are you able to apply to the GSOP grant and another grant through HCI at the same time? You are. If you are eligible to apply, you may, but you can only receive one award per year at a time. So you have to select either. Um, and if you receive the GSOP, um, it would be a two-year term if you accepted the one-year funding. 
So you would not be able to apply for BHSP or another scholarship the following year since you are in a two year term for GSOP. OK, question from Maria Wong. Do we qualify if we are currently in an S MSW program? Yes, I'm sorry. I was. If you could repeat that question again. Do we qualify if we are currently in an MSW program? Yes, yes. If you are in your master's of social work program as of September 2024, you would be eligible to apply. Contact okay. information used as a reference. We do not um, take references. References are not needed. OK, um, question from Nam. I am the psych D, psych D program at California Institute of Integral Studies, but it doesn't show up in the school selection drop down menu. Is this school eligible for this scholarship? We need to have um, some help with that answer. Hi, um, please email us about that. I believe it's qualified, but I don't want to say absolutely sure without checking into it. So um, Diana will give you an email later in the uh, recording that you can contact us at. It's also on our website. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, question from Trina Rodriguez. What defines a homeless youth and how would you provide proof that from our past? I'll go ahead and jump in on this one. Hi, Jessica Fifield. I work on some of the scoring work here. Um, so you'll see this um, in the application as well. Um, but um, what we're asking is if you um, have a history of being homeless and there'll be a little pop-up that will define that as an individual or family who lacks a fixed, regular, and adequate nighttime residence, such as those living in emergency shelters, transitional housing, temporary staying with others, or places not meant for habitation. So if that applies to you, then you will indicate that you have that experience. If you have doubts about if that applies to you, you can always email our um, BH mailbox if you have some, you know, very unique circumstance. And then in terms of the um, how would you um, provide um, proof of that, um, there's not like some additional corroboration we ask you for on the application. However, when you get to the end of your application, you will certify that all of the information in the application is true and accurate to the best of your knowledge. And it could potentially pose an issue, you know, if you were intentionally, you know, to lie about that. We don't assume anybody would, but um, on the off chance that, you know, anybody would think about that, we would discourage you from that. But otherwise, we're going to treat this as if you're answering that honestly, based on your experience again, and then you'll certify that that is the case. Thanks. Thank you, Jessica. Question from Clara. Uh, when reapplying, do we have to resubmit all documents again? I'm sorry, submit what documents? Uh, Clara, can you clarify which documents you think you may have to resubmit? If she could um, forward the question to our email box yes. at BH Programs. Yes, um, thank you, Clara. Please email bhprograms.com at ch, sorry, at hki.ca.gov. Uh, Brianna, does the service commitment of two years apply regardless of the amount awarded? Correct, two year, 24 month commitment. Right, and for Mona, are you eligible if you attend a private university? It has to be a California university nonprofit um, college that you would be eligible to apply. OK, um, Jessica, do we need references for the application submission? You do not. No references needed, but you do need to provide a contact that lives outside of the house. Right. Uh, from Nate, on slide 21, it says academic settings include CSU and UC, but I thought that nonprofit universities qualify as well. They do, but the um, that's a qualification for the scoring. 
criteria for the scoring that it's a California State University or a University of California. Okay. So just just uh, to clarify, be, because it applies in scoring, um, that means that it doesn't disqualify you from qualify you from applying, but there are some additional points that you might receive if you are in one of the priority um, application settings. Okay. Uh, from Delona, I'm enrolling in an MSW program. Am I eligible for this award? The literature indicated we had to be enrolled by September of 2024. Correct. So you would be eligible if you are enrolled in a program in September of 2024, as of September 30th of 2024. If you are not enrolled in your program until after that date, you would not be eligible for to apply for the application. OK. Um, from Myra, if I got a stipend from CalSWIC and I have to give them one year after graduation, can I still apply for this? You get, cannot. You can. It would be in conflict if you were to have a commitment with the CalSWIC and then the commitment with the GSOP. So it would not. Um, you would not be eligible for that. Let me clarify that it's at the same time. So if you got a CalSWEC stipend in year one, but you're applying for year two, that's possible. But that means you're going to have three years of service obligation, one year for CalSWEC and two years for GSOP. Thank you, Ann. Um, sorry, I got disconnected for a short time. I'm not sure if I missed anything else. Um, Jeanette Garcia, if I'm doing my master's in social work and meet the requirements for scholarships, do I qualify? If you meet the requirements, you are eligible to apply. Yes. Uh, please clarify if the GSOP grant and the BH grant both are available for MSW students. Correct. The GSOP grant is um, the two-year, 24-month service obligation, whereas the BHSP grant is a 24-month, I'm sorry, a 12-month service obligation. And the GSOP is um, more specific to graduate students, whereas the BHSP um, takes individuals who are in their undergrad AA um, certificate and graduate school and postgraduate school. Um, and if Anne wanted to add any further, Clinton? It also, the educational um, opportunities are different for GSOP. GSOP only supports public and private nonprofit, whereas BHSP could be used for private for-profit education settings in California. Hi, hi folks, this is Clinton. I'm program manager over this. Um, I want to add to this that you are allowed to apply for both programs. However, you're only eligible to receive funding for one. So if you believe you're in a circumstance where you might want to apply for GSOP as well as BHSP, you're welcome to fill out these two separate applications in those applications, we actually offer you the chance to provide a ranking of which one you prefer more than the other. And if the funds are available, we will put you in the one of your preference. Uh, but you can only receive funding for one program. So I want to call that out. You're welcome to fill out both applications and we offer you a chance to rank them too when you apply. So if you feel that that's appropriate, go ahead. Thank you, Clinton. Uh, from Nicole, uh, can you please clarify about the requirements to provide licensure uh, documentation before the grant agreement ends? Does that mean by the end of the two years we have to be able to attain license licensure? <laughs> Sorry. No, you do not need license. Um, you need to be able to register with the Board of Behavioral Sciences in the case of a social worker. In the case of psychology, it would be the Board of Psychology. But uh, the idea is that within six months of graduation, you will register as an ASW social worker or an AMFT or associate 
clinical practitioner under psychology. Okay. I am a former homeless foster youth going into my MSW program at UCLA to become an L LCSW. Do I qualify? You would qualify if you start your program by September 2024. If we are accepted to a two year grant, does this mean four years of nonprofit work? Um, no, if I understand the question correctly, it's a two year grant and it's a two year service obligation, whether it's one year of funding or two years of funding. And I think we've answered this one already. Do we have to work for two years in order to get the stipend? And they have to commit to the, the two years. I'm going to be transferring to Fresno State this fall. Will I be eligible to apply? Yes. Yes, you Thank would. You. If you have, if you are enrolled as of September 2020. Within California, right. If applying for the Behavioral Health Scholarship, do we have to submit the education uh, deferment letter if we don't have a grant agreement number? So for the GSOP, there is not a deferment letter. We do not have a deferment letter. That is if you are um, applying for your undergraduate um, or you are in your undergraduate for one of the other grants, but not for the GSOP. From Douglas, I have a non-clinical work experience at CSU. Does this count towards the evaluation? You know that Jessica chime in. Yeah, I, I um I would encourage you maybe to to email our mailbox just so that um I can make sure that I'm addressing your specific um circumstance. But um in general, um the application um sorry, bear with me. I'm looking, making sure I look at the right reference. Uh Move to screen. Oh no. Um, sorry. Um, in general, the application is going to ask if you have volunteered or worked in an underserved area. So, uh, thinking about, uh, you know, the the work experience that you have, that non clinical experience, was that in an underserved area? Was that with underserved groups? Um, it's entirely possible that two people might, you know, work. And clinical experience and have two different answers based on who they were working with. So depending on what answer applies to you, um, then you would answer that. Um, the fact that it was specifically for a particular employer, that's not inherently problematic. But again, for very specific concern, um, go ahead and email us. But in general, um, you're being asked if you've worked with underserved populations or in underserved areas. Um, and if you did not do that, uh, irrespective of, you know, the rest of the details, that is probably going to be a no. Um, the question will also ask if you have worked for a CBO. So if you uh, did work for a community-based um, organization, then that will be your other pathway to say yes. Um, if your answer to all of those items are no, no, I've never volunteered or worked in an underserved area with an underserved group or at a CBO, that's okay. You can still apply just for the evaluation scoring. We won't give you points for a thing you haven't done. This is Clinton again. I just wanted to chime in here. That working in those circumstances could give you some extra points to help you in your application. Your previous work you did will not count as your future service obligation, that two years that you have to serve, just to make it clear. Whatever work you've done in the past up until now does not count. We're looking for a future obligation after you graduate. Thank you. Does work at public schools count towards the two year service application? Example, school counselor or school wellness coordinator. Uh, does um, your work, I'm assuming? to follow up with that. Uh, as Clinton just said a moment ago, if yes. if you're asking about current work or previous work, it will not count toward your service obligation. 
Yeah, they, they don't clarify with it, whether it's work done or future work. Um, but if you have additional questions or want to um, provide more clarification, please email us. Do you know why the deadline is so different early from the last cycle of 2023? Okay, I'll answer. Yeah. Uh, Clinton, again, in the, in the last time that we did this, we had a 60 day cycle. And now I think we bumped it down to 45 days, I believe. So we just clipped off a few extra days, but uh, a difference that we had last year, we were flush with funding. We had more funding than we had uh, demand for the funding. This year we're in the reverse. We, uh, we we are expecting more demand than we may have funding for. So that said, please be careful in filling out your application and submitting all your correct forms, you know, because you don't want to be uh, made ineligible or disqualified because of that, because we want to we want to spend all of our money down to the last penny, dish it all out. And so please be careful of how you submit your application. And, and that's also the reason for the reduced time frame. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, question from Clara. If you're working your two year of nonprofit and go on maternity leave, does this time you are out count for the two years? There is um, an extension or circumstance for extension that you could um, email us with and provide that documentation. And um, and you can always email us for further information about that at BH programs. Thank you. Uh, from Nicole, the GSOP seems to be more specific as it requires graduates to work in a community-based organization, while the Behavioral Health Scholarship only requires us to work with underserved populations. The question. That's partially true. Yes, there is a requirement for GSOP uh, working in a community-based organization, and it's a two-year commitment service obligation. Are those who are graduating in spring of 2025 eligible? Yes, if you are enrolled when you apply in September of 2024. Uh, from Myra, is Cal Baptize eligible for this program? Is, I'm sorry, what eligible? Cal Baptize, I believe that's how it's pronounced. Oh, it's California Baptist uh, College. Baptist. A baptize. <laughs> it's, it's a college. And um, okay. if it's a nonprofit institution, it's eligible. You're eligible. Okay, we have a two part question from um, Cass. Two part question uh, What other forms are required besides the scholarship cost of attendance form and the SPV form? And two, also, when it says up to 25,000 and a total of 50,000, does that mean 25,000 a semester or a year for a two-year program? Hi, everybody. It's Clinton again. Um, so what we'll be looking for from the, 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 the forms is the, um, the, the graduate date, uh, or we're looking for the, 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 the SPV form from your school. We'll be looking for the... Um, We'll be looking for the the cost of attendance form, uh, a, a, a quote for your expenses for the year, and we'll be uh, possibly. Oh, if you work for a CBO too, we'll be looking for an employment verification form to to basically prove or justify that you worked for uh, a CBO in the past to help with that 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 bonus points uh, for eligibility or for for the scoring. And then uh, the other thing, too, is that if you've worked for the state of California before um, in any form or fashion, whether you work for a state college or a UC, or uh, also if you work for, as an in-home support specialist, uh, any, any form of state employment where you receive a check from the state of California, we would like to see a conflict of interest letter. The benefit of you turning one in is that if we see your conflict of interest letter, uh, we have to send that to the state controller. Because if if they, the state controller believes that you've been paid by the state in some other form, and then you're also getting money from us, the state controller may hold up your funds for uh, a few extra days or a few extra weeks um, because they'll they'll want to reconcile that. So if if you have if you work for a UC, if you work for a state college, you work for in home support specialist, some or some other state job, you may want to provide a conflict of interest letter. 
Uh, when you get to the end of your application, there will the last the the second to last page will be a form upload page, and it'll show you everything you have to download based on your pathway of the questions that you answer throughout your application. So it'll show you what forms you need to do based on your the way you've answered your questions. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Um, it says recently you guys approved Fresno State uh, Pacific University for your MSW program for them to offer it. Would you qualify for this program as a student of theirs? And uh, which school or sorry, which program? I the MSW know. program. So you would qualify if you are in an MSW program or apply for the MSW program by September 2024. Do CBU students qualify? If it's a private nonprofit university, if you are qualified. Okay, there. Oh no, you're froze. Let me step in while, oh, there you go. You're back. <laughs> Alma, you had froze. The last thing we heard was the answer oh. to the question, do CBU students qualified? Um, so okay. whatever comes after that, we haven't heard yet. Uh, yes, I, I guess I wasn't aware. The employment address verification form is not working. And they're asking if there's a workaround. I'm not sure if there's a, this is a known issue with this form. It might be an IT issue. Um, it may be a browser issue. If you stop the application and um, you re restart the application, it is um, preferable that it, it, it be in Chrome, not in other applications such as Safari. There may be some delays. But either way, please email us at BH programs if after some attempts you are not able to um, complete your application. And also please um, look at the technical assistance guide for some direction as well. Um, from Samantha, are there any HKI scholarship opportunities for recent MSW grads, um, graduates from May 2024 and who are planning to register for an ASW? So um, scholarships are reserved for students that are currently enrolled if um, funding is needed for postgraduate. Um, it would be under loan repayment programs or different funding source programs. And you can have more information or find more information on our website. Can you explain how the funding is allocated? Does the funding go straight towards the tuition or does the applicant have to stay in where the funding should be used? The applicant or the awardee will receive a paper check from the state of California in the amount of the full award or the award that um, they were rewarded. And it is to be applied towards what was written in the cost of attendance for the year or two years of um, cost of attendance. But it is at the discretion of the applicants on how they um, deposit or redeem that, that funding. Looks like this is a question on the form itself for the application. Have you ever received an income-based financial aid award at any college or university where enrolled? Is this question for my current graduate program or in the past schools I have attended. I received income-based financial aid during my undergraduate time, but my graduate program starting in August in the financial aid award letter has not been released. Yeah, I suspect a lot of folks will be in this. Um, so the question is if you have ever. So if you have ever uh, received um, income-based financial aid, uh, you would indicate yes to that. 
Um, there's some examples that will pop up in the application. Um, that list is not exhaustive. That's just to help clarify what we mean by income-based. And also, um, if you are beginning your program and you've been notified you're going to receive aid, um, if that is the first time for you, but you have not actually gotten money in your hands, you can still answer that question. Um, it'll give you the option to say, I've been notified I will be receiving income-based financial aid. Thanks. Thank you. From Sam, is there a specific definition for community-based organization? Actually just popped that one in the chat, so um, I'll call that out. I don't know if Anne has any um, additional input on that, but um, I put the language from our grant guide there just for easy viewing. Yeah, it's a 501c3. Yes. Okay, I'm a county employee. Would I qualify? You, if you are enrolled as a student um, applying in September of 2024, you may be eligible to apply. If you are a county employee currently, you may want to um, see if your funding comes from the state of California and if you um, need to complete a conflict of interest form in your application. Okay, uh, graduating from with my MSW in May of 2024. So only a student for another month, am I eligible? No, you would not be eligible if you are not enrolled in up to six units per semester in September. Would marriage to a high income partner disqualify you, disqualify you for this award? Um, I don't have an answer for that. But um, not, a, not at all. Um, the questions that you're going to answer that are finance related is you're going to ask about your um, prior receipt of income based financial aid. Um, you either have or have not. So you'll indicate that um, if your circumstance has changed because of um, you know, family kinship structures, including marriage. That's not something we ask about. Um, you'll also be asked separately, um, you know, to fill out the form for the cost of attendance. Um, that is the cost to attend. We don't uh, collect information about your FAFSA, your expected family contribution. Uh, we don't ask you for your W-2s, tax documents, things like that. So um, your partner, family, anybody else's income, um, is not something that we would be collecting from you for this application. Okay, from Melissa, will it be possible to do some of the future jobs via telehealth or will all service jobs be on the ground? There may be some telehealth available um, and that's further explained in the grant guide for eligible telehealth positions. Uh, submit a letter of conflict of interest if employed by the state. If so, what does that need to include? Is there a format for the letter? There is a there is a template in the application. When you download that, and um, and then you can upload the completed form back into your application and the e app in the portal. And then they ask. Uh, We've lost down that further. Am I back? You're back yeah, now. Yeah, you did. Okay. <laughs> we, we didn't hear Sorry. anything you said, though. OK, uh, someone else asked about the, the conflict of interest interest form. They asked what the the form is used for. As Clinton, uh, I'll answer that. Um, the purpose of the conflict of interest is is the the main the main idea that they want to convey is that uh, that just like it sounds like a conflict of interest. For example, me or or our pro program office officer or or any one of the other people who work at HKI. Okay, because we're administering the awards, we also wouldn't be eligible to apply for these awards because that is literally a conflict of interest. OK, like like the people who dish out uh, the winning, you know, at the lottery. If, if if they're picking the numbers, they can't be eligible for getting an award themselves. And so that's the purpose of the conflict of interest is that in the state of California knows 
that you're getting a check from one source from the state and then also from another. It, it just wants to know what's going on here. Can you explain that to me? And and that's that's all it is. So it, the conflict of interest letter is just basically a three sentence explanation. I worked for this place in the state between this time and that time. Uh, I you know this was my specific role. And then you either you have a clarifying sentences. I do have a conflict of interest or I do not have a conflict of interest, but spell it out so that the state controller is comfortable with it and then they will not hold up your money. OK. Does Pepperdine uh, count as a California State University? No, it is not a public university. It is a private university. You should see, you should check their website to make sure that they are a nonprofit web, uh, university, though. Okay. Uh, from Brandon, can you share GSOP community based organizations we can work at after graduation? For example, do school based social work positions at public schools qualify, or is GSOP only for nonprofit work, no public school employment? Schools are considered public uh, institutions and therefore are not nonprofits. Also, FYI, the chat feature is not working. Well, someone's having issues with the chat feature. Um, it seems to be working for others. There's still a lot of questions in the chat. Um, but if you're not able to send us your question via chat, please email us at bhprograms.hki.ca.gov. Um, next question is, um, will another webinar be offered? Uh, this webinar is going to be recorded um, and it will be posted within seven to 10 business days. So you can uh, view it later as well as the material. And um, if we did not cover your question, you can always email us as well. Does being a CASP member affect eligibility for this grant? If you could email us with that question, clarify that question a little bit further, we can research and, and provide an answer. Okay, from Jasmine, I applied for the MSW program for this fall, but as a part-time program, do I still qualify? I will be doing a three-year program instead of a two-year program. You must be taking at least at least six units per semester or equivalent to to a semester to be eligible to apply. Does a scholarship cover the whole master's of, for Fresno Pacific University? No, um, it is dependent on um, what is submitted for the cost of attendance and what is available. And um, that if for one year, it would be up to the 25,000 scholarship award maximum or for two years up to 50,000. OK, uh, from Michelle, I received the advanced practice health care scholarship last year. Am I still eligible for the GSOP or behavior health scholarship? I'm sorry, which scholarship did they receive? Um, the APHSP. If they um, have finished their contract term for that, uh, and they are still in school, they may be eligible to apply for both the BHSP and the GSOP and um, will have it awarded. We'll have to select just one of those programs. OK, and then. Uh, how would we be alerted if we were selected? How will be funds be distributed? Um, there's a timeline listed in the grant guide that we went over a little bit earlier. If you could um, review that, and if there are any further questions from that time, please email us. OK, uh, from Jennifer, when you say cost of attendance, are you referring to just units or regist and registration or books as well? We're referring to the cost of attendance, what it will cost you to attend your program for one year. That may include um, living and tuition, books, transportation, 
but it is what is provided to you through your school, what is quoted to you from your school. Okay, and from Yahida, I'm sorry if this was already mentioned, but what degree do we put if MSW isn't listed in the application for the degree portion? It should be, right? It should be an LCSW. If you are getting an MSW, your goal would be an ASW or an um, LCSW. So your professional goal is to become a licensed clinical social worker. There should be a place though where you indicate you're a master's or social work student. We are receiving tuition assistance for the Department of Rehabilitation. Are we are we still eligible to receive funding? Yes, you are. Okay. Um, from Noe, uh, Naomi, Fresno Pacific has not been approved for student federal aid. Do we qualify? I'm not sure we discussed that already. It depends on if it's a private nonprofit university. Okay, some of these questions have already been answered. Um, eligible. Yeah, I'm eligible for if I am eligible if I was a CalSWIC stipend recipient, but no longer have an application after graduation. Okay, I think that was just a comment. Um, yes, and someone asked about the conflict of interest form again, so that's been answered. Um, you do have to click yes and submit the form. Are you eligible to apply if you are a certified community health worker and a doula? If you are enrolled in school in September of 2024. Yes. In graduate school. Sorry, Alma, I think we might have missed one that I think other folks might also want to know, um, are you planning a career providing direct services? Um, what does this mean? I feel like between Diana and Anne, folks might want to, any extra clarity we can way. give on what counts as direct services. So direct um, services are services you provide to a child or adult um, in the form of behavioral health treatment or assessments. Um, so they're direct care of an individual or group of ind individuals. Thank you. I apologize if I skipped a question. Um, I've been, I've had interrupted service a couple of times, so I must have not synced correctly. To clarify about working for UC, does it have to be current or do we have to report prior employment? during undergrad as well. If you have worked for UC at any point in your career, you would want to report it that you have worked there, you no longer work there on your conflict of interest form. Um, will your wages be garnished if you do not meet the service application? Your application or um, failure to complete and fulfill the obligations, um, you may be in breach and you would be able to find that information in the grant guide in detail. If you have any questions regarding that, then please email us. Okay. Uh You know if I missed anything, I, I've been having an issue with my connection. It keeps kicking me out and oh wait, I see a new message. So just to be sure that I see a couple of questions, one relating to UMass Global. We no longer 
um, support of uh, uh, scholarships to students at UMass. It's not a California based university. As um, also um, working in a community college is not considered a nonprofit. Uh, community colleges or public institutions. Um, and eligible if I was at CalSwick stipend. I think that already has been answered. Let me also me jump please? in. There's a yes. question about certified community health worker and doula. Um, you may be eligible, but only if you have the intention to become a behavioral health clinician. So that your prior experience um, would only speak to whether or not you served um, underserved communities or in an underserved area. OK. Um, I believe we've gone through all of them. The one that you just answered, I thought we had covered it earlier and uh, maybe. Um... My mistake. OK. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, from, oops. So, am I eligible at if I was a CalSwick stipend recipient, but no longer have an application after graduation? This is a question from uh, Jonisha. So I the apologize. Issue, there's an, an issue with the syncing, but go ahead, Anne. Um, the issue is whether or not you are getting a stipend in this or next academic year, in which case you would not be eligible for the GSOP uh, scholarship. And uh, from Monica, does being a mental health case manager in risk areas qualify? For the service obligation, um, you must be um, in a community based organization. And if if that is in a community based organization and they're working um, towards licensure or um, registering for licensure, then yes. But if it's just working um, at that organization it, and it is not a community based organization, then no, they would not qualify. To complete okay. the service obligation. And I think uh, Mona is asking for specific uh, examples of places to work at, uh, like a list of community based organizations. There is uh, not a specific list, but um, if when they come to the time of graduation and need to fulfill that, um, they could email us to verify that it is qualifiable community-based organization. Okay, and um, I don't know if there was a part one to Michelle's question, but uh, she's asking for, for clarification on the contract term. This was in reference to having received the APHSP scholarship last year, and she's still in school. Okay. So each of the awards has a contract term. Um, the year that it's awarded so the GSOP can have a two year contract term that is separate from the service obligation um, time of also 24 months. But the contract term um, varies by scholarship, but it is either a 12 month term or a 24 month contract term. And in between that term, you cannot accept other awards. You are um, only able to accept one scholarship at a time for contract term. Okay. So um, what, what you should do is check with the rules of your APH SP scholarship documentation to see what the, the term is. 
Um, it may have been awarded to you last year, but be considered a two-year term. So that's what you need to uh, document for yourself. And if and if that um, has been solved and you no longer have a service obligation associated with with it, then you could be eligible for GSOP. That's what Diana is saying. Okay, from Grace, if we worked at a community based or a uh, nonprofit previously, are we allowed to work there again to complete a two year requirement? If you are working in behavioral health to fulfill your service obligation, yes. Okay, and I think you just answered this one too. Are we allowed to apply even after receiving the GOP award at UCLA for MSW? <clears throat> I don't know what the GOP award. I was going to say I'm also maybe not it's GSS familiar with the GOP award, so that yeah. might be one to email us just so okay. that we can check about your individual situation. But then the general principle that applies is that if you have a conflicting contract, conflicting service agreement, that generally does pose an issue. But um, yeah, if you want to email us about your specific circumstance, we can try to help you out. Okay. Um, Monica is asking, does being a mental health case manager in rural areas qualify? Um, for the service obligation, you could email us um, asking specifically if it's for your service obligation or if you are currently working there and it's a conflict of interest or it might be a conflict of interest. Okay. Uh, from Cynthia, do you have to reapply for the scholarship every year or do you automatically qualify for a two year of funding? It's a two year contract term. So, um, generally, so it would be applying every nice. um, at the end of every term if you are still in school. Are undergraduates eligible? Not for the GSOP at this time. OK, from Jennifer, what are your thoughts on doing your service obligations with the state? I will be staying with the state, for example, social services or CalVet. You have to be in a CBO, a, a community based organization. So working for the state or the county or the city may not qualify. They are public, um, public agency. OK. And I believe the one for Cynthia has already been answered as working for a school district considered a CBO or nonprofit, which is the answer is no. No, actually, there are nonprofit if they are charter schools. So oh. that may be what they're referring to. Charter mm -hmm. schools are often nonprofit. There are also public non charter, or excuse me, public charter schools. So really, you need to make sure that the school is a uh, charter nonprofit. And then Vanessa says, what if you are going to a to an online school, not for profit? It has to be a California based headquartered based nonprofit school. And it could be um, an online or an in person program, but it must be a California school. OK, I'm not sure if there's a part missing to it. Crystal's question. She says, I work for a contracted company inside the state prison, substance abuse based. Yes, that would be considered a private nonprofit. There are no private nonprofit organizations who do uh, contract with correctional, both state and county, as well as federal prisons um, and facilities. OK, and then from Brandon, just for clarification, if I get employment out of 501C3 nonprofit school as a social worker, I would email GSOP to see if this school is considered a CBO. You would email BH programs at hki.ca.gov. Yes. Yeah, that regarding question. that. Yeah, OK. Yeah. When making a nonprofit, uh, when making a profile 
it only lists the following degrees, but no MSW. Um, so they're saying that MSW is not on the list. Is that accurate? Yeah, um, we could look further into that if they can email us. Okay. And then we'll look to see if that's available or if there might be some thing going on with the IT issue. Okay, um, Elaine's um, asking, I had a social worker come to my house as a child consecutively. Is that considered part of the child welfare system? And that Jessica chime Yes, it, it, it is. Thank you, Anne. Um, is working for a Title I low-income school district providing mental health services fulfill the employment service requirement? It would still be um, for this award needing to be a nonprofit, um, nonprofit organization, community-based organization. If it was just a public school, it would not qualify. Okay. Uh, and it looks like we just have one question left from Michelle. Mm. She's frozen again. So the question is, if they have another HK award, um, uh, are they eligible? Um, uh, you have to complete the first one before you can ask for a second. I don't know if I'm back. Am I back? You're back. You're back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Mona. Uh, what is the service requirement uh, deferment letter? Do I need um, Do I need it if I am currently enrolled in my master's program in a master's program? The service um, obligation deferment letter is for undergrad. It is not for the GSOP um, award. It is for like the behavioral health. Scholarship Program Award. If you are um, finishing your undergrad and going immediately into your graduate program, then you would um, complete that deferment letter and upload that to your BHSP application, not the GSOP. Okay. Um, and there's um, some clarification to the question you answered from Michelle regarding. Um, Sorry, I have to scroll back up the service obligations and accepting two awards. Can you um, look at it? So she's saying to clarify, you need to complete the service obligation before you can apply to another HKI grant. Yes. No, you need to um, fulfill the service obligation for all of your HKI awards at the end of your graduation, one right after the other, depending on how many awards you received. If you received a GSOP, then you would have a two-year service obligation after graduation, but you can apply after the term for another scholarship if you are still in school once the term has finished for your, your first one has finished, you can apply the second year for another scholarship if you're eligible and you're not in the term that the service obligations all come at the end of your graduation from your um, from your program. Okay. Thank you. Well, it's been a few seconds and I don't see any questions in the chat. <laughs> oh, let's see. I the missed service, this answer to this. Go ahead. I'll Anne. just I'll just mention really quick because there seems to be confusion around service obligation and application cycles. So you, for example, if you got our behavioral health scholarship program award last year, you'd have one year service obligation and you apply for GSOP this year, you would have two years of service obligation. You'd be eligible for both, but that would mean you'd have three years at the end. I hope that is helped. To clarify, it's just you can't receive a grant from each program in the same year. Thank you, Anne. Okay, it seems like you've answered her question. Um, and there's another person, uh, Melissa, asking about the uh, drop down option for MSW. Um, 
So I think we're looking into that um, because they're saying that if that's not an option, then how do they move forward with completing their application? Clinton, do you know if there's an issue with that not being on the list? I'm, I'm looking into it in the data right now. Um, mm -hmm. I think there might be confusion because we asked the question, what is the degree or certification that you that you 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 you're seeking, and 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 you and I believe is is because we give you a choice between associate degree, master's degree, certificate. You know, obviously you choose a master's degree, and that might be where the confusion is. Later, we asked the question about what school you're enrolled in, and then we have a uh, um, uh, a a master's of social work or a social worker with MSW. I think is how it's worded. So it. MSW is, I, I think that's what you're looking for, is master's degree. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there other grant opportunities for graduate students? If you can visit our website, find out more scholarship opportunities that you may be eligible for. OK, well, thank you. Um, so if we did not get to your question, um, you can always email us at bhprograms at hki.ca.gov. Um, Jessica just mm, added a link to the chat with the link to our, all of our scholarships. You can <clears throat> check out what other programs um, are offered by HKI. And we appreciate your participation today in the Q&A session. Uh, we will be posting the recording. Um, along with the webinar deck uh, to the website within seven to 10 business days. And we will also email um, a communication to all the registrants with the recording and the deck um, within the same time frame. If you email our BH programs uh, email account, please allow 24 hours to receive a response. We did have a couple of webinars today, so uh, we will probably be slammed with quite a few questions. I appreciate that. And uh, now I will pass it on to Dr. Sharmil Shah with some closing remarks. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Alma, for that uh, wonderful um, work that you're doing to keep us all on track. And uh, thank you to our wonderful grants team. And again, to all of you for spending your valuable time with us today. Collectively, we are addressing mental health care shortages and taking steps to acknowledge the critical role that mental health has in our emotional well-being, which makes the role of behavioral health professionals so important. So on behalf of our team, myself and HKI executive leadership, we thank you. I'll now turn it back over to Alma to wrap us up. Thank you, Dr. Sherman Shaw. Uh, we do appreciate everyone joining us today to learn more about the Golden State Social Opportunity Scholarship Program. And we're excited to be able to offer this as part of our efforts at Health Workforce Development at HKI. And HKI is grateful for um, having you participate with us today. You want to go on to the next slide? Unless it's still frozen for me. I wanted to show you uh, with you some resources and some websites. I'm still seeing the Q&A session. Alma, on our side, we're seeing the follow us with all those QR codes oh. and yes. OK, well, then it's just frozen for me. <laughs> so we encourage you to visit our website and look at our wonderful resources that HKI offers. We have our uh, Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter and YouTube pages. Um, you can also see um, and I'm not sure if you're seeing this, uh, but um, our phone number, if you want to contact us by phone, 916-326-3700. You can email us at bhprograms at hki.ca.gov. And again, um, Thank you for um, joining us today. We also have um, a subscribe page. If you want to stay tuned with all the HKI offerings, please subscribe to our mailing list. And as a reminder, the application closes May 24th. Thank you all for attending today, and this concludes our webinar. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>